Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to the Nidia Freakout Hack. It is July, yet I'm wearing my ugly cosy jumper. I don't even like the colour of this jumper, but it's the coziest jumper I own and it's super soft because it's raining outside. Now I'm not complaining because I'm not a fan of hot weather. So I'm actually quite liking this, but that's my excuse for I'm wearing a jumper in July and it's a bit dark. So today I'm going to do the Midia Freakout tag. In previous years when I've done this, I think I've made comment about how let's not freak out because there's nothing to freak out about, but I can't quite believe it's July. I'm pretty sure that yesterday was the start of March, so <laughs> I am actually slightly freaking out about how far into the year we are. But this year, hmm, let's not start this video by saying this year has been terrible because I think we all know that this year has been terrible, but I'm trying not to pass any judgment and in fact I don't even have to try I'm just not passing any judgment on what I've read so far this year what I've thought of it um, there are some books that I don't really think I could give a fair chance because of when I read them and there are lots of books that I've DNF'd we're not going to talk about the number of books that I've DNF'd because I just wasn't in the right headspace to be able to read quite a lot of them so there's lots of books that I haven't talked about on this channel I was thinking about maybe doing a recap of all the books that I've read this year I'm like going to do some stats for you in a moment to tell you exactly how many of those there are but I was thinking about doing that but then I thought no because there are lots of them that I don't really think I could I don't really think my brain was there I don't really think I was <laughs> emotionally present when I was reading them so it's probably not I was probably not the best judge of what I was reading so I'm not going to bother I'm just going to start fresh there will be a wrap up at the end of July and there will be videos in between of me talking about books that I'm reading because I feel like I've got my mojo back a little bit. Everything is still terrible, it's still a dumpster fire, but I feel like I'm still at least able to read some good books whilst being in the dumpster. I'm not really sure this analogy is working, but let's get on with the tag. So before I start actually, I'm going to do a few little stats. I've got some stats written down here. Um, as of filming this, which is the 4th of July today as I'm filming this, I have read 28 books in 2023. 57% of those have been under 300 pages. 36% of those have been non-fiction, so 64% fiction. 19 have been print books. One ebook, I don't normally read that many ebooks unless they're proof copies, which I try not to read because I don't like them. But I read Trespasses by Louise Kennedy for the Women's Prize a reading that I was doing, and that was available from my library. So I got that immediately on ebook. Uh, but that's the only ebook I've read so far this year. And I've listened to eight audiobooks. In terms of how my ratings have gone, I've given two books five stars and I've given three books 2.5 stars and everything else has gone in between. There are a few questions on the traditional Midyear Freakout tag that I'm not going to answer because I just don't have answers for them. So those questions are the best sequel you've read so far this year. I haven't read any. I tend not to read books that are in series. I prefer standalones. Um, I did think of sort of tenuously saying that some books were sequels as in they were the first in the books that an author has set in a particular place or it's the follow-up to a big book but no, none of them are actually sequels so I can't even make that work. Um, newest fictional crush. I'm dead inside, I have no crushes. So those are the questions I'm not going to answer so we're going to get on with the other questions. So the best book you've read so far. I did say at the start that I'd got my mojo back. If you follow me on Instagram you will probably already know what this book is because I talked about it quite a lot yesterday um, and that book is Joan by Catherine J Chen. This book had been on my radar for a little while and then somebody mentioned it in their, did they mention it in their potential books for the women's prize? I think someone might have done so I got it from the library and it was on my book trolley which is just library books. It was on there for a really long time and I just, my head wasn't quite in the space to read it so I'd kind of kept thinking oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to get to eventually because I think I'm going to really like this and I'm glad that I waited so I waited until the time when you know, I had a little bit more headspace in order to get to it and I read it in I think about three days and I absolutely loved it it's completely got my mojo back for for reading I, I I now just can't stop reading I just want to read all the time I feel like I've got back to myself and it was the best book for that so if you don't know what it is it's a retelling of the life of Joan of Arc it's quite different. I didn't really know anything about it other than it's about Joan of Arc. But 
I wasn't quite expecting it to go in the directions that it did. It tells a quite different story, I think, than what most people are used to knowing about her life. Um, without really spoiling it too much, because I think it's nice if you don't know certain aspects of it, but it really focuses on her experience as a young woman. It starts when she's 10, it goes all the way to before her death, or just before. But it really takes you through her experience and the things that could have happened to her to make her be the person that she she is. And it focuses less on the spirituality, more on her kind of power as a as a woman at that time. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I think it's it's definitely a book that I think if you have a very fixed idea about well, who Joan of Arc is, um, then you probably perhaps maybe won't like this book. I might actually do just a, a quick video, a standalone review of this because I really loved it and it's it's got me back into reading again. It's definitely the best book I've read so far this year. Next question is, new release you haven't read yet but want to. And that new release is a non-fiction book called Camp by Paul Baker. It's probably pretty self-explanatory but this book is about the history of camp. Now Paul Baker wrote Outrageous which is the history of Section 28, a, a law in the UK which prevented schools or local authorities from promoting homosexuality. That, up until I read Joan, was the best book that I'd read this year and I read that in January. And it's an absolutely phenomenal book and absolutely loved it. Paul Baker also wrote uh, Fabulosa, which is a history of the uh, queer language Polari, which again, brilliant book. And his new book, Camp, which came out this year, and I had an advanced copy of it, I just never got around to reading it. So I have the ebook of that, which I might try and get to very soon because I'm really excited. And it's just a history of of camp. What What is camp? I did start reading that, and I think that's about as far as I got, is the definition of, well, what exactly is camp? And I do remember reading it thinking, you have explained it without really explaining it, because it is one of these slightly unexplainable things. But I'm really excited to read that, and I really want to get around to that very soon. So... The next question is, the most anticipated release for the second half of 2023? There are almost too many to name. There's quite a few and I wasn't sure which one to pick until yesterday when I discovered a new book by, I want to say a favourite author, even though they've only written one novel before and that's the only thing I've read. I think they've written some short stories but I'm very excited. So some of the other books that are coming out later on in 2023. Zadie Smith has a new novel out on the 7th of September. Jessamyn Ward has a new novel out on the 24th of October. Uh, Lauren Groff has a new book out on the 21st of September. These are all UK release dates but those are three books that I'm really excited for but the book that I am super excited for because I didn't know it was happening is a new book by Anna Smale and the book is called Bird Life. It's out on the 9th of November. Now Anna Smale was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2015 I think for The Chimes and if you've read The Chimes, I mean talk to me in the comments, I don't know many people who've read it or love it but I absolutely loved it and I don't actually think I can describe it. It's basically like a sci-fi fantasy, almost like dystopian, like queer book set in a world that's controlled by music. I mean it was insane but I loved it so much and I just thought it was brilliant. I thought Anna Smell was a fantastic writer, or is a fantastic writer. Um, but her new book, Bird Life, is apparently set in Tokyo and it's, it centres on the, the lives of two different women. Um, one who I think comes from New Zealand. I'm trying to remember the blurb now. I only read it yesterday. Comes from New Zealand and there's a uh, she meets a Japanese woman as well. And the book is really an exploration of madness and grief. And that's all I... Well, I was going to say that's all I need to know. All I needed to know is that Anna Smale has a new book out and I'm really excited to read it. Um, so that is, I think I said, but it's out on the 9th of November. So excited for that. I like how these questions go from excitement to, oh, as we go for biggest disappointment. There are two books I think that are on my biggest disappointments. Quite recently, yesterday I think, I finished The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. And I know that lots of people have said that this is not as good as Hamlet and... They didn't like it as much, but I'm quite contrary. So I was determined to love it. And I really didn't. But I do wonder if, firstly, I listened to it on audio and I'm not sure that's the best way to experience it. I perhaps should have read the book, but I also listened to it at the same time as reading Joan. Now, they are very different books and very different settings, but they're both explorations of the inner workings and the life of, of one woman. But the, 
the quality is very different. I think that Joan is phenomenal and I think that the marriage portrait is not. Um, but actually that's not my biggest disappointment this year. My biggest disappointment is In Memoriam by Alice Wynne, who I'm aware is going to probably be longlisted for the booker and lots of people keep saying is probably going to win. And if In Memoriam wins the booker, I may boycott the booker for the rest of eternity because it's such a disappointingly unoriginal novel and I so desperately wanted to love it though. I think that's probably my biggest disappointment because... I so wanted to love it. Like, I was so ready for it to be like the gay First World War novel of, of my dreams and I've said that before, it's not, it's really not, um, just shockingly unoriginal and I just really was so disappointed. The writing's really good, but no, but no. Um, what's the next question? Biggest surprise, I mean it was a surprise that I didn't like the marriage portrait, but my biggest surprise it's probably Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. I read this because it was longlisted for the Women's Prize and I was expecting to hate this book. I hate the cover, like I really can't even, I can't even with this cover, I can't even explain how much I dislike the covers of Sophie McIntosh's books. And I thought the book sounded slightly intriguing, it sounded like maybe it might be interesting. So I thought, oh, maybe I'll like it. It's a book about it's a book set in France and it's about a, a woman who is the wife of a baker and she kind of has this obsession with this other woman and then some poisoned bread and that's about it because nothing very much happens. But I was expecting to kind of be like, meh, about it and I absolutely loved it. Not a five star, maybe a four star, but I just thought it was phenomenal. I, I just, it's very much my kind of book where nothing very much happens and everything just kind of like plods along and it's very... Uh, looking inwardly at someone's interior life and I just mm, I just really liked it but it was such a surprise because I definitely judged the book by its cover and I hate the cover and I definitely thought it wasn't going to be the kind of book that I would like but it's made me want to read all of Sophie McIntosh's other books. Next question is new favourite author debut or new to me and I think I've not read a huge amount this year so I'm not really sure if I can judge this, but maybe Catherine J. Chen, I'd quite like to read her first book, Mary B, is it? Um, Sophie McIntosh, as I just said. But I think Jessamine Ward, who will reappear later in this uh, <laughs> later in this tag, but I read Jessamine Ward's first book, Where the Line Bleeds, and I really enjoyed that. I really, really liked it. I thought her writing was exceptional. I don't think you could tell it was a debut novel. I really don't think you could. I certainly couldn't. I'm really intrigued to read the rest of her stuff because I just thought it was really phenomenal. So I think probably Jasmine Ward, actually, I would answer for this particular question. Next question, newest favourite character, Joan from the book. Joan about Joan of Arc. I really liked her. I thought she was very well fleshed out character, very well drawn character, very vivid. She's still very much in my mind. I still very much know who she is and I really liked her, actually. I thought she was fantastic. So she's definitely my new favourite character this year. Oh, uh, next, next question. Book that made you cry? Well, you know, literally everything is making me cry at the moment. I cried at a Vodafone advert the other day, so it was quite emotional though. Was it a Vodafone advert? It was about a tennis player. Oh God, it made me all emotional. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Um, but actually Wandering Souls by Cecile Pant, I think it's the number one book that I'm really devastated did not win the Women's Prize. And if it doesn't get nominated for the Booker Prize, I just, I don't know what's wrong with the world because I thought it was really brilliant. I know lots of people had problems with it and maybe the way it was structured. and But I just thought it was just absolutely brilliant. I loved the audiobook of it. I just thought it was wonderful. It did make me cry. I think it was meant to make you cry. And... I am apparently not entirely dead inside because I did have a little weep whilst doing the dishes and I just thought it was phenomenal. Definitely, definitely the saddest book I've read this year. The next question is book that made you happy and genuinely could not think of a single book. I, I was thinking maybe Joan because it's kind of got me back into reading but it didn't really make me happy. It's not really a happy book. Um, In a completely biased fashion the book that I'm going to pick for this is a book that no one is going to read, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it anyway. But you just skip past this bit. Um, but the selected letters of Wilfred Owen, selected and edited by Jane Potter and proofread. Oh yes, this book is not out yet, but I proofread it because my supervisor uh, edited this book. And I think if you've never read someone's collected letters, 
or selected letters or whatever. They're a really great way, I think, of getting, assuming that someone wrote a lot of letters, but they're a really great way of getting an insight into it, what someone is like, you know, their voice, uh, their personality. You can really see quite a lot and you really get an insight into somebody's life. And especially if they wrote over a long time period. I mean, Wilfred Owen was only 25 when he died, but he was writing letters to his mummy when he was six because he's that kind of child. But when you get to see the whole span of life, you get to see the way that things change. You get to really learn to dislike them at certain points and really learn to be sympathetic for them at certain points. I think it made me happy because I really like hearing the voice of a real person coming through in something like their letters. So I think this is probably the only book which really made me happy this year. The next question is favourite video that you have made this year. Well I'm going to pick the last video that I put up which was all about how much I love booktube and I selected a few videos and a few booktubers that I think you should go and subscribe to. You should go and watch those videos if you haven't already. And that video for me was more than just an opportunity to say I love these booktubers and I think you should watch these particular videos. It was my little kind of like love letter to booktube to say thank you for everything that it's given me this year. So next question is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year. Now I haven't really bought many books this year and um, I mean one of them let me just move that book and one of them is this hefty tome which you might remember from another video I mean the end papers are beautiful and the, the bookmark but it is I mean Persephone books are all beautiful it feels beautiful um I haven't really I can't get it back in the shelf now but I haven't really bought anything that's particularly aesthetic I don't tend to buy like collector's stuff. Anyway, the only thing that I could think of was I recently bought for £1.50 in a charity shop at The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnim and I have never read any of her books before and this uh, I've heard people mention on booktube. I just really like this edition. Isn't this a beautiful cover? Isn't this lovely? I really really like this. So I'm going to pick this as the most beautiful book that I have got this year. Okay, I think we might be up to the last question. The last question is books you need to read by the end of the year with the caveats that no one needs to read anything but we're all going to anyway. I think the remaining books for the Queer TBR Tackle and hopefully go back and read some of the ones that I haven't been able to read so far. The remaining books for the Ian Forster read along. In fact, in order to get to the Persephone book I had to move out of the way How's End which is the the next thing I'm going to be reading but I think the main thing that I want to read not necessarily by the end of 2023 but actually before let me check the date when I need to do this by the 24th of October when her new book comes out but I need to read all of Jessamyn Ward's books so I have uh, two more of her novels to read I have Salvage the Bones and I have Sing Unburied Sing I have, I think there's another non-fiction that I've got, like a short essay that I've got um, on ebook from my library, but I've also got uh, her memoir, Men We Reaped. I've also got uh, her edited collection, uh, The Fire This Time, A New Generation Speaks About Race, which is edited by Jess Memoir. And then I also have her new novel, Letters to Send, which is out in October. Um, this proof edition actually might count as the uh, prettiest book that I've received this year because it's very shiny. But I am going to read, before I read that, I want to read all of her other books. I don't know why I've challenged myself to do this, but it seemed like a sensible decision at the time. So those are the books that I have to, have to make myself um, read. And it's not really going to be much of a chore because I've read one of her novels and I thought it was exceptional. So I'm really looking forward to getting around to these. The next one I'm going to be reading is Salvage the Bones. I might have already started. So that is my mid-year freakout tag for 2023. I've been watching lots of other videos of people doing their mid-year freakouts and it's really great to see people reflecting on what they've read and what they want to read. If you haven't filmed a video, if you don't have a channel, I would love to know your answers to these questions. Do leave me all of your comments and your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you very soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching.